And so this is what, you know, we, we kind of uh, talked about this a little bit um, before, but we really didn't get into it. And, I, and but you were asking me right as we were getting started, um, how much the um, issues with uh, disparities in healthcare um, have changed for, for African-Americans over the last 20 to 30 years, in my opinion. And I said, not much because the fundamental driver of those disparities haven't changed. And that is the um, implicit biases and racist ideation, ideation that Americans have about African-Americans um, because that's what's driving this. It's the false impressions that people have of African-Americans that color their interactions with us, both as patients and as colleagues. And, um, um, and, and well, and that's just it. I mean, um, and, and, but it, it, and it, it shows up in so many different ways. Um, one of the, the, the really insidious ways is the, just again, the sort of microaggressions and assumptions that um, healthcare providers can make about a patient based on their race and the, the attitude that they give them and the way that they treat them. And patients will absolutely pick up on these things and, and it can cause them stress. It can cause them uh, to shut down. And we both know that if you can't get your patient to trust you and to um, open up about what's really going on with them, you can't be a good doctor because you don't even know what you're trying to treat. Um, and, and, um, and, and that happens a lot. There's, there's the fact that unrelenting stress uh, 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 causes um, uh, stress-related genes to switch on that ramp up stress hormones, inflammation, and and uh, and 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 these are some of the things that predispose people of color to worse outcomes. Um, I, you know, I read an article once that it was, that was absolutely fascinating. I mean, you're very familiar with epigenetic effects, right? They were looking at the grandchildren of Holocaust survivors. And there's a documented case of the grandchild of a woman who was in a um, concentration camp in uh, either Germany or Poland. When she was shown, uh, it was a sign or some artifact, the granddaughter, mind you, from this camp, she had never seen it. She literally had a visceral physiological reaction to it. And it seemed that from her grandmother having seen this thing, it somehow epigenetically imprinted itself into her DNA. That and 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 I, I'm citing this to say that this is how powerful these 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 traumatic experiences that we as humans go through in life can be. That they can be passed down uh, through generations epigenetically, and uh, and that is again I think part of the reason that we see that um, African-Americans and other um, uh, um, uh, uh, ethnic groups that have been historically subjected to um, um, you know, race-based um, uh, abuse and mistreatment uh, can be, again, more susceptible to a variety uh, of illnesses and, and chronic ailments. Um, and there, there definitely have been um, studies done documenting uh, brain chemistry changes in children whose mothers, uh, who are in utero while their mothers are going through um, uh, racial, racial, racially based uh, stressful circumstances. And so um, we, we've got to, to realize that, that as a society, we've got to start dealing with the race the systemic and structural racial misperceptions that we all kind of pretend aren't there and we all sort of just hope are going to go away and they they and they have it and they won't until we really start to face them and deal with them so that 
we will stop imposing uh, these stressors on people, um, which again, color the way that we treat them, color our expectations of them, and also um, don't permit them to um, um, fully access the help and the care that they need. 